Hi, I'm Adam. I'm a Manitoba PA working in general surgery at the Health Sciences Centre in Winnipeg, Manitoba. What did you come into this position having those skill sets and being able to do them independently or how how was that incorporated into your job? Yeah. Um, so a lot of the uh, a lot of the other skills, um, you know, like NG tube insertion, uh, IV insertion, um, those are things that I traditionally did as a nurse. So I was very comfortable doing that. But uh, I remember the first time I opened up a wound and I just thought it was the coolest thing. And you know, all it is now is popping a few staples and sticking some forceps in there. But you know, how I how I learned that it's um, it, it's a it's an outdated mentality that stems from old school medicine. It's the see one do one teach one. And uh, I, I don't think it's sufficient in this day and age um, to go by that model. But it, you know, admittedly, a lot of my skills I picked up were the see one, do one, teach one. Uh, fortunately, I worked with a lot of residents, a lot of senior residents. So even though I wasn't necessarily directly learning from my attending, uh, at times, you know, I would I had great opportunities to kind of go in there with a with a senior resident, and we talked about procedural skills. And yeah, I think I, I, I saw one and then later on that afternoon I did one and now I teach them. But uh, yeah, we always have to be careful when learning new skills because we have to be not only confident um, that we're going to do it right, but we have to be confident to, to know what to do if something goes wrong. Uh, and that's just part of our, own pers our professional responsibility. When you're starting off learning anything, it's it's we want to learn how to do do it. You know what are the what are the steps? You know you're doing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy, and you know you're 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 trying to point out anatomy on the on the screen to a learner, and you're saying, well, these are the steps. These are the steps. Um, very soon, you have to start realizing, well, what what is what happens if this happens here? And it's very hard to train for that, and that's where just exposure comes into comes into play is very important. You have to get your numbers in. You have to, you know, when you, when you, when you see an opportunity to do a procedure, go and do it. You're not hoping that something goes wrong, but the only way you're going to see that and learn how to deal with it is uh, is actually getting your numbers in. Um, there's always always has to be a connect between. Uh, ongoing per, uh, like professional development, CME, and reading. Um, and we have a responsibility to know anytime we do a procedure how to handle the complications associated with that. And there's an expectation the learning doesn't end when you're out of school. You have to go home, you have to pick up a book, you have to say, okay, now I know these steps of doing set procedure. And you gotta look at every one of those steps and say, what do I do if something goes wrong between each of those transition points? And that's the bridging of the academic aspect back to the clinical aspect, and it never ends. And you always have to refine how you handle these things. And you know, with a supportive team like I have, it's very easy to you know, bring up these topics. You know, anytime I'm sent off to do something new that I've never done before, one of the first things I'm thinking in my head, okay, well, what if something goes wrong? And you have to be, comfortable to ask these things because if you don't know, you don't know. And um, what can patients expect from you or how do you interact with patients as a PA? Yeah, so I, I not many people love the scut work on the ward. I, I love it. I, it it's, it's, I get to be there all the time. If a patient has an issue, I can walk into the room. I try to be seen by patients as much as possible. I try to interact with staff and, and kind of come up with plans with, with the nursing staff on the ward too. So how I, how I interact with patients, you know, I, I do my own rounds every afternoon in the morning and then we all round as a team and then in the afternoon I come around and like do that spot check, you know, like what's going on. And the main part is not so much to see if something's, if something's missed um, because we've got a great nursing staff there and, and other support services that, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident are able to inform me. I, I, I love doing my rounds to talk to patients to kind of let them know that they're being cared for and their eyes on them. There are people who, who are who legitimately care about their, their well-being and their recovery um, going around. And a lot of time it's, you know, I, I allocate, you know, about an hour depending on how many patients we have on the ward to spend. Um, and I, I end up rounding like for multiple hours. Sometimes we get the conversation. We, you know, just, just talking to patients is one of the, the sound, it sounds, it sounds cliche, it sounds a little uh, fluffy, but it, it's, it's, it's really rewarding to just talk to people um, and kind of get a better grasp of what they're experiencing and then kind of pull that into your own practice and kind of adjust your approach uh, to, you know, clinic-based medicine. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you interact with nursing, MLI Health? Yeah, so 
allied health is omnipresent at, at the Health Sciences Centre and you know you, you become very reliant on them and you develop great relationships and it behooves you to, to, to develop a good relationship with them. Um, I, I lean on our, our pharmacists like a crutch. I, I, I love having their expertise, their input. Um, so I'm spoiled in that respect, you know, it's, it's versus a PA who may be working in a mine or be, be in a rural scenario where they really have to, you know, really use their resources very wisely due to limitations and, and kind of think outside the box and, and move in. I have the luxury of being able to pull in all these specialty services. So, you know, it's developing relationships is really big. Nursing has always been very easy. Um, I know when I came on, it, it, you feel like you know you're the new person on the block, and, and everybody's scrutinizing you. My easy way in was you know talking about my past as well. Um, I have very great relationships with them. I, I, I advocate for transparency and not being afraid to contact the team with any questions. We're all learning together. Uh, most of the nurses have my number. If there's something going on versus paging me, they'll shoot me a text, and it's, it's a more efficient way of doing things. And yeah, it's it's it's. You have to, you have to have that relationship with the multidisciplinary team. It's, it's, you know, you don't have to like everyone you work with, but um, you know, it's not about us. It's about the patients. Um, yeah. And uh, how do you interact with physicians? What is the PA MD relationship like? Yeah, so it's 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 highly variable. I I, I keep things pretty professional. Um, I don't have any issues ever approaching my attendings. Uh, they're very easy to reach, whether it's, you know, me having a question on the ward, you know, throwing on a scrub cap, going into the operating room, looking over the drape. You know, they know when I show up, there's usually something bad going on, and <laughs> I'm either giving them bad news or asking for some advice. Um, but they're great, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll see me in the operating room, we can have a quick conversation about what's going on, any questions will be addressed. Uh, plans determine if I'm uncomfortable. Um, they're also available by, you know, by phone. It's it's very easy to get a hold of uh, of, of, of my physicians. Um, I say I do keep our relationship fairly uh, fairly professional. Uh, I work with multiple physicians. I, I think I, I have contracts signed with about twelve of them. Um, yeah. 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 And do you find that um, is the relationship? Uh, well, is your role more autonomous, or is the MD seeing every patient that you see, or round on every patient that you see? Right, right. So, uh, the level of autonomy actually amazed me when I when I started as a PA. Um, I believe, again, I, I, I espouse transparency, and I think one of the biggest ways to get yourself into into trouble and, and even you know possibly hurt patients is to not ask when you have questions. Uh, I autonomously uh, you know, initiate diagnostics, uh, conduct procedures without, um, without necessarily consulting in advance with my attending. And that, that evolves over time when you, again, are comfortable with your skill set, you know what the expectation is. Um, at the same time, I always make it a point to, to deliver that information at the end of the day. It's, we have a great structure and you know, they round in the morning, I round in the afternoon, and then the attendings usually come around after the operating rooms are, 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 are all, after the operations are all done, we round in the evening. And I like to always disclose things that, I, that, I, that have come up with their patients. If I were to be called down to a clinic to see a patient, um, even if it's something minute, I always mention, you know, so-and-so was in here. And just, it just closes a loop, it uh, facilitates discussion. Sometimes there are learning opportunities that, that arise out of that. Um, and I, I, I tell everyone, I'm like, being autonomous, working autonomously is, is it's, it's great, but always ask questions. Try to stimulate conversation with the attendings. Um, if you don't know something, it's just learning opportunities. But yeah, I have a high degree of uh, autonomy in the clinical setting. You mentioned uh, initiating procedures mm -hmm. and diagnostic um, mm -hmm. uh, interventions. Yeah. And is that within the scope of practice of a PA? Within. Um, we have to be careful that uh, when we do initiate uh, interventions or conduct procedures that they are within the scope of practice of our attending physician. Um, I don't ever make the decision autonomously to start a patient on chemotherapy or anything like that because that's not within, first off, my knowledge base nor is it within the, uh, the scope of practice of my attending physician. So uh, any procedure I do, I, I try to make sure that it is something that I'm well versed in 
uh, am authorized to do that, and that usually develops uh, as your relationship with the attendings develop over time. You kind of figure out what they want to delegate to you as work and what they feel comfortable with you doing, but it must remain within their scope of practice. And so whatever your attending physician is able to do and they're comfortable with delegating, you're able to do yourself as well. Yes. Generally speaking, absolutely. I, I sometimes joke around and I say, if my attending uh, tells me to remove somebody's brain, I can remove somebody's brain. <laughs> I'm joking, obviously, but I mean, it's, it's, they're negotiated. Um, they're negotiated tasks. Um, like I said, it just builds over time. And but yeah, I, I, I've, I've quite a great mixed bag of, of skills and procedures that uh, I'm allowed to do. And what do you enjoy about being a PA? Well, being a PA, uh, best job I've ever had. <laughs> um, when I was at that crossroads of, of you know what I what I wanted to do next for for an education program when I was in nursing, you know, I do an MP stream. Do I pursue something like 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 medicine, like formally, or go into the PA thing? You know, I I I wanted something that I wasn't forfeiting uh, previous previous skills that I had developed. I wanted the patient uh, interaction aspect, and I wanted I wanted portability of my job as well, which is which is important. I want the ability to move around within specialties and, and just gain a better understanding of of, of the system. So what I love about being a PA is, is the variety, um, my ability to dedicate five, ten years of my life in a surgical subspecialty and then maybe even moving on to something else and, you know, just learning something different in medicine perhaps or, you know, going into dermatology. Uh, you don't get that as a, as a physician. You're kind of locked in unless you're going to go and do another residency. So it's... It's the ability to move around and, and get a variety, uh, get a variety of, of exposure. It's it's enriching even. It's enriching for any, any variety is great.